You know, muskies unquestionably are one of the premier uh, sport fish in North America today, and we have more of them because of uh, Department of Natural Resources have stocked them in waters all across the country. But it wasn't that long ago, realistically, muskies were actually commercially fished, which is really interesting that they used to actually go out and net them in Lake Erie and other bodies of water. From the Ohio River Basin to the Minnesota North Woods, muskies have faced a long history of overfishing, spearing, habitat degradation, and other challenges dating back to the 1800s. Being a low density, top of the line predator, muskies are extremely vulnerable to commercial netting, which virtually wiped out native muskie populations in Green Bay of Lake Michigan, Maumee Bay of Lake Erie, and other locations around the Great Lakes. Loss of spawning and rearing habitat played a continuing role in population collapse throughout the muskie world. Angling over harvest took a similar toll. Muskie derbies in the mid-1900s fostered a catch and kill effort, with proud anglers hoisting a generation of muskie broodstock before cameras. Thousands upon thousands of big fish perished beneath the onslaught as the fish met the legal size limit were harvested for fame, fortune, and food. This catch and kill mentality prevailed until 1966 when Gil Ham and a group of innovators founded Muskies Inc. Its primary objective was to revitalize muskie fishing through a combination of stocking, encouraging progressive management strategies, and promoting the revolutionary concept of catch and release. As anglers and fisheries departments gradually accepted these modern practices, existing muskie populations rebounded. Oh, oh, there's one. Good one. Good one. Wow, Jim. Big fish, man. New waters Holy were stocked, smokes. and the numbers and size of available fish began to rival and even surpass those in historic. <laughs> More than likely, the biggest reason that we have such a good muskie fishery today is because of two things, angler ethics, almost all anglers today that musky fish release everything they catch, and strict regulations. Minnesota used to be a 40 inch minimum. You could keep a fish over 40 inches. That's our average today. Now it's 48 inches. Ontario's 54 inches. It's regulations and angler ethics like that that have produced great fisheries across the country. You know, Along with these quality fisheries, probably one of the biggest things is, that, you know, you're talking about angler ethics, is also the anglers are actually, have the right tools to release these fish. When you look in the boat here, most muskie fishermen are rigged up with bolt cutters, hookouts, jaw spreaders, a big deep net, like we got this frayable net that sits in the water by the side of the boat when you're gonna release the fish and it really minimizes delayed mortality. So more of the fish are surviving that are caught to be re-caught again and eventually grow to real whoppers like that one Jeremy just let go. We're fishing today on one of my favorite fisheries and it's Minnesota's famed Leech Lake. There was a historical muskie event that happened here in the 1950s called the Leech Lake Muskie Rampage where a group of guys went out and just pounded the muskies from Federal Dam out in Portage Bay. But realistically, that pounding that they had in the 50s that has been so famed and published all over the country is a fairly common occurrence. We fish oh, muskies right. a lot up here, and it's not oh, uncommon oh, 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 for two yeah, anglers over the course of the oh, season to maybe have oh, a few one. days where you boat between five and 10 fish. If you were to have that happen and you were to be standing with a group of guys that all had six muskies, it would look exactly like the pictures in the old days. And again, it all just comes back to angler ethics and good management. 